All right, hi folks, Bear Paw Seven here. We got a uh, little Bear Paw Seven uh, bodybuilding today. Uh, we're gonna do uh, calves and squats. Uh, we're gonna duel them up today. Uh, uh, we got a little setup here in the power cage. I'm gonna flash over to that and uh, you can kind of see my little setup. Uh, don't take much, uh, 2x4s, 2x12s, some weights. Um, you can have yourself a nice little uh, calf uh, area uh, with your squats, mix them up. It's, uh, it's kind of nice. Um, gets a pretty good uh, hurt on your legs and it feels pretty good. And uh, we're going to see what our time is. We're going to try and scope this out so we can uh, get a lot jam-packed in there for you today. And uh, so with that, we're going to move along. We're going to have a little reading from the book of Genesis today. We're going to move back into the Old Testament just a little bit. And then we're going to move right into squats and calves. Genesis, the book of chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So today we're going to talk a little bit about creation, um, day one. Day one. Um, what is day one? Day one could be anything, um, obviously. Um, God created the light. What uh, the universe was prior to God creating the light, uh, the stars, the heavens, we don't really know. Uh, could be our brains couldn't perceive what that meant, even if God told us. We have difficulty accepting the universe being forever. You know, what, is, what was before the earth? You know, what... What went before the earth? I mean, something, where does the time circle begin? Where do we, where do we pop in? Um, so we, we really can't fathom all that. So God really kind of sums it up for us. In the beginning, in the beginning as we know it, um, mankind, the beginning of us, the beginning of this plan, God's plan for his created beings. And... Uh, we're going to shoot for about 30 minutes today. Uh, we'll kind of get you going in, into some uh, squats and calves. And 30 minutes is kind of a start and a good leg workout. You want to get at least an hour in. And if you're pushing it really hard after an hour, you're not going to have a whole lot left, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, two hours on a really good day. Um, but you don't get that very often if you're pushing it very hard. Um, so we're going to shoot for about 30 minutes today. That'll get you a good foundation of squats and calves. And so as we take a break, we're going to pop on back and to talk about Genesis chapter 1 here and, and creation. And, uh, you know, it's pretty huge. Creation's pretty huge. Caused a lot of controversy out there. Um, but why? I don't know why should it. You know, we had nothing to do with it. Uh, we can only speculate, you know, but uh, the Bible, and if you believe the Bible is uh, God's word, uh, it's pretty simple to believe. If you don't believe the Bible is God's word, then you can argue all day long about little uh, inconsistencies in your own imaginations and your own teachings at the universities, you know, and they don't agree, they don't agree amongst themselves, so it's kind of hard to believe them, so. All right, here we go. We're going to get into some squads and calves. And I'm kind of going to pan around here uh, so you can kind of see the squat calf area. And then we're going to settle down on the other side and kind of aim this way. But I want you to kind of see my little setup here. And uh, so you can do that in your own home, your own garages, at the gym, whatever you want to do. So here we go. All right. 
we're going to pan around here. And uh, you can kind of see we got nothing fancy on the floor here. We got, uh, I got some 2x12s, all right, in the power cage, all right. And uh, we got some plates on the side just to kind of keep it in place, all right, so that it ain't popping around. You get a little heavier weight on there, then uh, you might want to throw some heavier Olympic plates on there. All right, but uh, this is pretty good. This is this will this will get you on down the road um, for squats and calves. And so we're gonna get over here, and we're gonna get right to business here. And we're gonna shoot for right around uh, 12 reps today. Uh, 12 for squats, 12 for calves, and. Uh, and we're going to see where that puts us in our time. It looks like we're going to be pretty, pretty good on our time here. And so we're going to move right into some squats. All right, we're going to start out with uh, some 45 pound plates. And uh, then we're going to kind of move up a little bit. We're going to start pyramiding up. And then we'll see what uh, time allows us here. All right. Uh, nice. Comfortable grip on the Olympic bar here, and nice, nice comfortable stance. Just whatever's comfortable for you. You know, don't, don't worry about what the other guy's doing. Just what's comfortable for you. You know, shoulder width, maybe uh, narrower, wider, whatever works for you. What feels comfortable. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. Now we're going to move right over here to the calf raise board. This takes a little balance and kind of lean forward. Put your bar on the power cage. Kind of a lot of rest there. It takes a little balance. All right. And up we go. Twelve, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we're gonna chew the flab just a little bit here and uh, talk about the beginning again from Genesis. Um, creation is uh, pretty uh, awesome. It's, uh, that's a word that's used too much now, the word awesome. And very little in this creation bequeaths the word awesome. God does. If you look out into the stars at night, into the heavens, you see the beauty of the various star groups and clusters. You can legitimately say, awesome. If you go hiking up in the Rocky Mountains, get to the top of a mountain, whether you're doing a solo climb, technical climb, or you're hiking around the back of the mountain, you get to the top and you look out over the, the hundreds of miles that you can see in each direction as you pan around, you can say awesome. There's very few things that can say awesome in this universe except God's creation in reality. His creation is awesome. And uh, once again, the human body. You could say that about the human body. The human body is awesome. You know, we have computers, you know, you got the video game graphics are so cool, but you know what? The computers can't heal themselves. All right, the body can. And some people push their bodies a little hard and their body breaks down. Sometimes children are born with defects from radiation, from poisons, from mommy and daddy drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, doing, you know, uh, drugs, whatever. But, you know, left in its uh, God-given state, the human body heals itself. And that, friends, is awesome. Okay? And uh, when the body starts getting old, the body starts shutting down. It's a, it's a natural... We are in a time clock. These are time clocks. And we have only a certain amount of time here on this earth. And this is our proving ground for our eternal well-being. Where are we going to spend eternity? 
Do we want to honor God who gave us these bodies to inhabit? And we were, we were created to be worshipers of the Almighty God in Jesus Christ the Son. That's what we are created for. Everybody, if you wonder, it's not, you know, I wonder what my purpose is and give you the, all the hand signs and all that, that uh, well, I don't know what my purpose is. Your purpose is to be a worshiper of God Almighty and obey Him and love Him because that's what we were created for. And you can either accept it or not. And so, all right, we've talked about uh, awesome things in creation. Now we're going to get back to some squats and calves. So we chewed the flab a little bit. Now we're going to get back to some squats and calves. So we're going to throw on another plate here. Move up just a little bit. If you don't have a power cage at home or in your gym, that's okay. Squat racks are just fine. You don't have quite the uh, safety factor with the squat racks. I got some squat racks over here. I think I've showed them to you before. Uh, handmade jobs I made, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, and they're still serving me to this day. I still use them, but I really like the power cage. Uh, power cage is really fantastic for, uh, for just about uh, uh, most exercise movements that you want to do. The power cage has a safety factor. You can move the little safety bars up and down. You can move your... Your hooks up and down, you know, set it to your body's height and what you're comfortable with and what you're doing. Inclines, declines, bench, deadlift, squats, you know, just about anything. So, uh, don't want to be a salesman, but the power cages are pretty nice. Squat racks are pretty nice, but you know, you know, if you, if you get start loading it up with the heavier weights and you get down and you're on the way up and you just can't quite get that last rep, then you're kind of stuck with uh, having to peel that baby off and uh, get out from under it as fast as you can in a brutal movement. So, and, uh, and that's a little bit dangerous and uh, you know, things get busted. And so, um, anyway, power cages are nice. Smith machines are also nice. Uh, Smith machines, you can get a little too comfortable with them. You know, you start getting used to the, the uh, leverage and, uh, but they are nice also. So here we go. I'm gonna chew the, chew the flap a little bit. I gotta stop chewing the flap. Get back to squats and calves here. All right, here we go. Nice and hot in the bear's den today. Here we go. Squats. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, now calves. There we go. Lean forward just a bit. There we go. One, two, three. Six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, that's pretty good. Now get the old chair over here. Shoot the flat again. All right. I think we're doing pretty good with the old time. The, uh, the exercise movement for squats and calves is, uh, is a pretty legitimate movement. Your whole body, you know, after well, I did my warm-ups, that's three, four, five, five sets of 12 for me on my end of squats and five sets of 12 on the calves, all right? So, yeah, it's kind of warm in Wisconsin here, 
um, but it's not that warm. And I'm already drenched with sweat. My pores are cleaning out pretty good. That's a legitimate exercise. That's a good, that's a good flush set. Um, that really is a good combination. So, anyway, back to creation. And uh, we talked about the beginning. Creation, awesome. Let's talk about light. Uh, without light, eventually, uh, all plants pretty much die off. And they will go comatose. If you dig up let's see, use Wisconsin here. If you dig up the soil in the ground, there's hundreds of seeds in the dirt. If you dig up the soil, spin it around, and you just leave it alone, you know, uh, in the beginning of summer, by the end of summer, your ground is just gonna be loaded with plants and green. Maybe not what you want, but there's all its, these are all comatose type seeds in the ground and they needed a little light and they started growing and uh, the whole plant generation that light synthesis happened and they started growing so light is like the epitome of the beginning of light light is light you have various uh, colors in the spectrum of light you have energy that's produced from light. Um, the li little uh, uh, photo uh, cells can generate electricity, electricity from light. And so the beginning of light is light. So you have light now. Now light shines upon God's creation. And you start to see his creation now. Not only is there energy and light created, but you can actually now see it. And... Um, so with that said, you know, we look on dark planets out in the galaxy. You know, we can see now with the telescopes and so forth, the farther and deeper they go out, there's darkness and there's uh, like virtually nothing growing on the surface. So you need other things in combination with the light. But some of them planets have drastic, you know, hot, cold. And plants don't exist very well in that environment. So God created the heavens and the earth, and he moved across the surface of the deep of the earth. And the earth um, does uh, appear to have been, when it was created, underwater, and that uh, God brooded and hovered over the surface of the waters. And when he did that, then he created light. Uh, now, either means that he said, okay, light is out there, or at some point in time, there was uh, stars in the heavens that created light. We don't really know. And then you get to the fact of what does one day mean? Well, there wasn't the sun spinning around the earth, okay? You didn't have the stars and the constellations moving around the heavens. And so we really don't know what that first day, what the length of it was, okay? Because there was no time factor of the earth spinning moved around the sun and that was 24 hours there was no sun the sun wasn't there he hadn't created that yet okay so what that one day was we really don't know and that's really the the well why is it all these fragments of the earth and the earth is you know billions of years old Maybe it is, we really don't know, but the point being is that one day, whatever it uh, represented, either a 24 hour period or a 24 billion year period is irrelevant. You know, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, now, done chewing the flab. Let's load up the plates here and we'll see what we got with our time. All right, check on our time here. We got, all right, we gotta get moving here. I'm chewing the flab too much. All right, rest easy though. We're gonna get another set in here. All right, all right. 
this will be another plate, another set of calves, another set of squats. And wherever you're at in your workout, I know that you're going to be feeling pretty good after that whole effort there. Alright, so I know I'm feeling pretty good. Alright. Okay. Time's looking not too bad. Alright. Got the clips on. Safety clips are on. Good. Alright, safety clips are on. We have a little schluck of coffee here. I don't know if you folks drink coffee when you're working out. I kind of like uh, having coffee uh, while I'm working out. Um, at this stage of my life, I'm on night shift, so this, this time period is kind of my uh, waking up time period of my day. Even though it's uh, late morning, early afternoon, this is kind of my early morning. This is my, this is Ed's morning, all right? So, you work nights uh, where the, the sun is sometimes is, uh, uh, doesn't really represent what your day is. Uh, so, I wind up, you know, going to work when the sun is up and uh, I wind up coming home from work uh, frequently uh, when the sun is just about to come up. And uh, so, Anyway, this is my kind of wake up time and I like to have a little bit of coffee with my uh, morning workout. Not that you could really call this morning, but I call it morning because this, this is my time schedule. All right, here we go. Time for some squats. All right. Okay, here we go. Hands are getting pretty sweaty, but we're gonna leave off the gloves today. We don't really need them. All right, here we go. We're probably gonna, all right. Get a comfortable set in here. We'll see where we're at. One, two. Got a little bug problem in here today. Kind of annoying. Three, four, five. Seven. Eight. Nine. Anyway, that was 
with a good set. Get the old bear's chair here. All right. Woo! All right. Now we're gonna do our calves yet. I gotta catch my breath. Here. All right. All right. Long hours, a long week. That'll wear you out. Whew. All right. Here we go. Okay. We're going to chew the flap just a sec. And we're going to do uh, another set of uh, calf raises. We're going to chew the flab just a little bit. And I'll kill two birds with one stone. So that'll let me catch my breath. And we'll chew the flab and we'll still keep this around 30 minutes. All right. Anyway, we talked a little bit about day one of the creation and the, the whole concept of day one. People argue about for years, like Adam. How could Adam and Eve have grandchildren if his daughters, Adam and Eve's daughter and sons, didn't commit incest with one another? Well, I don't believe that they did. And I'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the next segment of Genesis. And I will give you just a little hint into what I believe the Bible talks about because God forbade incest in the law. So therefore God would not condone doing something that was against the law, okay? So don't, uh, don't be too quick to turn off the radio or your YouTube. That's just my personal beliefs. And we'll talk about that, but I believe God created other peoples on the earth at the same time. And the book of Genesis gives a little insight into that. And you just put two and two together, you know, and you come up with four, okay? God doesn't, you know, God didn't condone uh, incest. And so God didn't, wouldn't create people to go ahead and practice something he forbade, all right? So anyway, but as far as that, we're going to move back now to where we're at with uh, the creation of day one. Day one, there's nothing that we can see because uh, we're not there, you know. Humankind is not there, you know. There's personal uh, beliefs of uh, book writers and uh, novelists out there that believe that there was some, some kind of life on this earth and the planets prior to that day of creation. They believe that God shook it all up and uh, cremated it into a, a, uh, a uh, darkness. Why, why it says that God moved or brooded over the darkness. Some people, novelists, think that uh, even good theologians uh, would even say that very possibly there was a God design cataclysm that happened and that uh, whatever species or angelic beings or whatever they were on the earth or planets then was kind of wiped out very coming into play with the um, the fall of the angels. I don't know that I believe that. I don't know that I don't believe that. I'm just kind of giving you um, some other folks' opinions. And, and for the most part, really, that's all we can have. Um, don't classify me a heretic just because I don't believe what you believe. It's kind of irrelevant as far as creation goes um, because we weren't there. And we can't control it. And uh, nobody wrote it down with a pen or recorded it with a video. We don't really know. So we can only speculate by the words that God gave us. So with that, we're going to kind of wrap up chewing the flab today. And uh, God bless you guys. And we're going to do one more set of calves. And I'm going to cut you loose for your own workouts or your own day. And uh, with that, we're going to get right to calves here. 
We're gonna get our last set in. Squats and calves. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. I wanna get this last set in here. All right, there we go. Last set of calves. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, there you have it, folks. Bear Paw Seven Summer Edition squats and calves. God bless you, folks. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bear Paul 7 out.